Hello, it's Joe the CRM chap here. We're back once again with another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to build or extend solutions onto a Dynamics 365 Online or the Power Platform. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can post events out into Azure Service Bus. Now, events are basically um, things that occur within the application as we're targeting operations against Dynamics 365 or the common data service. So if you've worked before with plugins in terms of the context around plugins, they're quite similar to that. The benefit of events is you get details about in terms of when a record has changed, um, what has triggered it, all sorts of useful metadata. and. Potentially, when you're looking to process, um, you know, transactions or, or events that have occurred in the application, um, sort of asynchronously, um, you know, and maybe send that off into a separate database, maybe process it into another system to be queued. And this is where events can become really useful. And when you start looking at tools such as um, um, the Azure Service Bus, you can actually queue out the various events, the transactions as they happen in your system get them into an Azure Service Bus queue, and then from there process them as part of a function, as part of a logic app. You can basically do whatever you want with it at that particular point. So the focus for today's video is we're gonna be taking a look at how you can, uh, first of all, set up Azure Service Bus, get it all ready to go and configured so it can start to receive events from Dynamics 365. Then we'll talk through how you set that up, and we'll see in action in terms of how an event gets pushed out from the system into Azure Service Bus and what that sort of looks like. So you can see, first of all, we're in the Azure portal. Um, so first of all, we need to, as I say, create our Azure Service Bus resource. So I'm just going to go to create a resource at the top of here. Uh, I'm going to type in uh, Service Bus at the top, uh, and we should get our uh, option down here. Yep, Azure Service Bus. Just going to give it some very basic details. Uh, so we'll just create a brand new uh, resource group uh, for this called MB400. And we will call this MB400 uh, Demo. Uh, we'll put this into UK South for today. And for the purpose of this, we're just going to select standard as our pricing tier for this today. Uh, there's a few differences between the various different offerings. Uh, standard probably in most cases will, will suit what you need in terms of um, both from a price point and also from a feature set as well. So at this point, we're going to click Review and Create and then get that resource created out into Azure. It should only take a minute or so. Okay, and we can see our resource is ready to go. So at this point, we can click the button down here and we get jumped straight into it. Now, with our service bus created, we now need to create a queue that exists within that and then grant it the appropriate privileges and settings so that we can write out into it um, from Dynamics 365. So we're going to go down to queues down here. I'm going to create a new queue by pressing the button up here. And we'll just call this MB400 as our queue name. Now, most of these settings you'll typically want to sort of cater to suit your needs in terms of, okay, how long you want messages to sort of remain in the queue, what the mass maximum size are, do you want to enable water deletion settings and things like that. Duplicate detection might be quite useful as well. And we're just going to accept the default settings as they are. Click on create. Uh, oh, try that again. I think I might have triggered that twice by accident. Um, okay, that's been created now. Next step is we actually need to go in there. We need to give it the appropriate privileges so that we can actually start sending messages to it. And we do this by going to shared access policies down here. Click add on here. Um, so we'll just call this MB400 uh, demo. Uh, up here, cut box enabled MB400 uh, demo. And we just want to grant this send and listen privileges on this queue. Click on create. At this point, we get an access policy. And, and most importantly, we get a, a connection string that we can use. So I'm just going to take a copy of that. I'm just going to pop it onto my uh, onto my notepad uh, on the other screen here. At this point, we've got everything set up, ready to go within Azure. So now we need to jump across into the plugin registration tool. Um, so this, if you've been watching the previous videos in this series, you should be familiar in terms of how you get access to this tool. I'll drop a link in the uh, in the description below with some details in terms of how you can download it as well separately. Um, so first of all, we just need to open up the tool. Uh, we create our new connection, so we need to get into our uh, instance that we're using, our MB400 instance. So click login over there, get that in there. And at this point, we need to register a new service endpoint. So this, will basically, this is basically our connection to the queue that we've just sort of set up on here. So we're going to click on register at the top, click on register new service endpoint. Um, we've already got our connection string, so what we can do is just copy and paste that into there. Click on next. And we can see we get everything in here 
sort of set up ready to go for us. The only thing we just need to change very quickly is the message format. We want to send it out as a JSON array. Uh, JSON data sets are usually fairly a lot easier to work with, or JSON documents, I should say. Uh, so always try and go for that if you, uh, if you can. At this point, we can click Save. And we've got our endpoint registration set up. Now, the experience moving on from here is fairly similar in terms of when you set new plugin steps. So, if we, in fact, if we right click this now, we can see we've got an option register new step. So, similar to a plugin, we can trigger you know any particular um, um, you know message in the application can be triggered to then write out into the into the um, service bus queue. So, whether that's you know an update, a create, a delete, um, we've got a lot of flexibility around that as part of this. Uh, for today's example, we're just going to do a very simple step. We're just going to basically write out new contact details in their entirety. Uh, to our service bus queue. So for that, we're going to need our create message. Uh, our primary entity is going to be our contact. Uh, we want to make sure this is processed asynchronously. We don't want to block this from the user. We want this to process in the background. So we click on async. Uh, all of the details on there look all good on that. So at this point, we're just going to click register new step. At this point, everything is now ready to go. So we're going to jump across now into our instance that we're connected to, uh, into the model driven app that we built out earlier in the series. And at this point, we're just going to create a brand new contact. So we're just going to call this uh, John Doe. Um, uh, we will put in a couple of different details so we can just sort of see how those sort of get popped out and stuff. So we'll just call that uh, John at domain.com. And at this point, we're just going to click save. And at this point now, behind the scenes, the application is um, going to be processing this out and sending it out into our service bus queue. Um, we can actually see what's going on. If we were to jump into the advanced settings and into system jobs, we can take a look and see, okay, has the message gone out successfully or has it errored? Um, so just leave that one in a second. But if we were to go back across into Azure now, back into our queue on here, we should see that we've got, yeah, one active message that has appeared in there. And the great thing is that we can actually inspect that from within the portal. We can just click on Service Bus Explorer down here, uh, click on the peak button, and then straight away we get the message that's been posted out down here. And the whole the content, all the details about it is in there. At the moment, it's, you can't really see too much in terms of what's going on. Um, so we're just going to get that out and we're going to pop it into uh, Notepad++. So we can just sort of inspect it in a bit more detail. Uh, just give me a second on here. I just want to make sure that's been set. OK. So you can see we got a whole bunch of really useful information that's coming out as part of this. So as I say, it's very similar in terms of our context when we're working from a plugin standpoint. So for example, we can see, okay, you know, where which business unit has this executed in, the depth of the operation, is it in a transaction, the message name, we get our input output parameters, our context, you know, entity images as well. You can have pre and post images that get sent out as part of this, shared variables. And if we were to go into detail, if we were to go into our I think our pair and context down here, we can see, yeah, we got all the attribute details that we just put on there. So John Doe, manager, john at domain.com. All of that is written out successfully into our service bus queue. So at this point, we're happy. This is all working, ready to go. We can now look at both some additional logic to process those messages from the queue, get them to where they need to be sent, our external system, our logic app function, whatever it is, whatever it may be. Um, so at this point, just the only thing just to quickly show you is that if you were having issues with your um, you know, your events getting pushed out into service bus, then you can inspect them a bit further by going into system jobs. Um, now, because it's completed successfully in our case, we won't be able to see any particular, um, um, we won't be able to see any, um, any completed ones in here because it automatically clears it down. But you can see I've got a few ones from yesterday where I was having some problems trying to get it working. So at this point, we can sort of, uh, navigate in and inspect things in a little bit more detail. So in this particular case, I hadn't quite set up the service bus queue correctly and I was using the wrong connection string. So that's why I was getting the error down there. Um, so we can just jump into here, expand the details tab down here, and yeah, we get an error message down there that we can inspect or do something further with uh, if we wanted to. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. So as I say, service bus and events are really great to use when you need, when you're processing lots of different you know changes or operations. You need to get those queued up in a sort of neat and orderly way so that, that they can be processed you know um, further on down the line. In this situation, you're not really too concerned about an operation completing synchronously. You're happy for things to just sort of be 
um, executed as and when your particular solution, um, you know, your logic app or your function app, you know, picks up the message and then rolls with it. So potentially a good way of being able to process things in bulk from the application. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video then. Uh, so I hope this has been useful in terms of showing you how to work with events in the Azure Service Bus. Um, please uh, like, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in the content. Um, we've got a whole series on this exam and also try to do videos on other subjects as well. Uh, so it be really great to have you along for the ride um, if you're interested. So all these would say is have a great day ahead. Thank you.